Okay, welcome everyone to this, this evening's session. Um, for us it's evening, for some people it may be afternoon, and for our presenter it's actually morning. So welcome to Sahal Sahahi, who is an educator and trainer from Saudi Arabia. He specialises in, in, the, uh, in education systems in ESL and EFL in the Middle East and he's currently working um, at one of the universities in Saudi Arabia where he's working with the English Institute. His session tonight is going to talk to us about mobile phones as an underutilised pedagogical device, which I'm quite interested in. So I'm really, really interested in seeing what we ha uh, here to have here tonight. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors and supporters. Thank you very much to Steve Hargaden and the Learning Revolution and the Australia E-Series who are bringing us this conference. A special thanks to Cyber, the Cyber Academy who are sponsoring our conference this weekend and also to Coach Carol and Shambles who are both in the room tonight for their undying support of getting this conference up and running. So thank you to you all. Before we get before we get too far tonight, it would be great to see where everyone's from. So if you have a look on the left hand side of the whiteboard, you can see a little arrow. So pick up one of the little smiley faces and place it in your part of the world. So we can get an idea of what time zones we're looking at at the moment. Welcome Penny, it's good to see you here. Quite a few from Australia. Shambles, you must be asleep. Oh, you're on your iPad. I'll put one in for you, Shambles. How's that, Shambles? Okay, looks fantastic. Quite a few from Australia at this point in time and Shambles and Sahal in Saudi Arabia, so it's great to see. So I'll pass over to Sahal and he will, oh, <laughs> we'll have to make sure it's there next time. Um, I'll pass over to you Sahal and you can share um, your presentation tonight. We're really looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Ness, <coughs> and welcome everybody. Actually, I'm so afraid with cough and flu, I suddenly got a bug, so I'm sure you are hearing a funny voice. <coughs> this is morning here, as Ms. introduced me. I will work here, right? Okay, actually, first of all, I want to start with the mobile phones. Like, what are your ideas about mobile phones? Should we use mobile phones in the classrooms or not? Could you please write a simile, like, and just use emo emotions? <coughs> So how many agree we should use it in the classrooms? Okay. <coughs> yes, 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 all. Oh. Okay. So I'm getting green tick for yes. Okay. Actually, <coughs> where I work, undecided, okay? Right. Hopefully after this presentation, you'll have something in your mind. <coughs> okay. And all mobile in secondary and now, okay? Not primary. Okay. So all agreed. Right. <clears throat> so basically, there, there, there is still confusion in our minds, like whether we should use mobile phones or not, because people consider it still like uh, the gasmo of evil or distractor or something like in the classroom, it is a big disaster in the classroom if you're using mobile phones. <clears throat> some way it is correct, and some way, like, it depends how you use it. So <clears throat> what I see, I see mobile phones as underutilized pedagogical devices. The devices that can be used in our pedagogy, we are not using. <clears throat> like, uh, just take it like a book. Before the book came into the uh, market, people were talking about book is going to replace the teacher, but it never happened. Then the computers came in. People again had the option or they had the myth that okay, now computers are going to replace the teacher in the class. It didn't happen. Now we have the mobile phones. People have this idea that okay, mobile phones are going to replace the teachers. 
I don't think so. So that's why I say they are just like add-on tools. They are not the teachers. You cannot replace the book. You cannot replace the computer. You cannot replace any other tool in the classroom. Mobile phones can be used as just add-on tools, as we do with our whiteboards, markers. So yes, Kush, I agree with you. Nothing replaces the teacher. <clears throat> so let's move on to another slide. What is mobile learning, basically? Before before we move on, we need to know what is M learning. We know E learning. Uh, we know learning theories. We know all about like the past pedagogical uses and technology, whatever has been used. So now this is the time of M learning. This is mobile learning. <coughs> First of all, the, the simplest definition that I come up with is the use of mobile devices in learning is mobile learning. <coughs> Any device. I'm not talking about mobile phones. I'm not talking about any like iPads or tablets or pocket PCs. I'm just talking about any device that is mobile, that is at your hand, that can fit into your pocket, that, that you can carry anywhere with you. So, <clears throat> so let, let's see just like according to different researchers, what do they think about mobile learning? Uh, according to O'Malley, mobile learning is any sort of learning that happens when the learner is not at a fixed, predetermined location or learning that happens when the learner takes advantage of the learning opportunities offered by mobile technologies. <clears throat> People often uh, mistake it that mobile phones, like mobile learning, is a kind of e-learning, but according to me, I don't agree to it, because e-learning is a different domain. Mobile learning has become a different domain. <clears throat> Why? In OMLS definition, I have marked, like, I have uh, just uh, written some words in red, like fixed. Learner is not at a fixed predetermined location. In e-learning what happens, you decide where the learner should sit or where can he access, like a computer, he has to be at home, the location is decided in so-and-so lab, in so-and-so room. <clears throat> and the learner takes advantages of the learning opportunities after of, offered by mobile technologies. Uh, on the other hand, e-learning gives you a particular platform, you have to use the same platform. <clears throat> so, uh, it, it, I, I'm reading like some, there is some tension. PPT is now a few more so far than actually the last answer. Okay. Now, I think that, I'm sorry for that. That will be okay. Yeah. I'll catch up. I'll catch up. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right. So, Another definition is M learning is the acquisition of any knowledge and skill through using mobile technology anywhere, anytime. That results in an alteration in behavior. <clears throat> we'll talk about it in detail, acquisition of any knowledge and skill. By using mobile devices, what kind of knowledge do you acquire? Or the, like does the learner acquire or what kind of skill does the learner acquire? <clears throat> and it is not at a particular place. So that's why the term anywhere, anytime is mostly used with mobile learning, according to Gates in 2004. Okay, mobile learning is any educational provision where the sole or dominant technologies are handheld or palm top devices. So this is the basic, like according to John Trackler, he says whatever technologies you use, that is mobile and that is like easily carried, that is uh, considered as a mobile learning part. <clears throat> why should we use mobile phones? I why do we use mobile phones? These are the two main questions. <clears throat> the first one is uh, if you consider how many of you use mobile phones for playing games, chatting with family and friends, texting messages, downloading pictures and music and videos. Could you please say yes or no? How many agree that most of most, most of us use mobile phones for playing games, chatting with family and friends, texting messages, and downloading pictures, music, and videos? 
Can I see some yes or no's? Okay. Just uh, about yes. the, the names, uh -huh. you can see there's four yeses and zero no's. Yes. Okay. Okay. Signing for. Right. <clears throat> Okay, and, and now for us to consider as the educators, why should we use these phones as like uh, educational devices or the tools in our classroom? As educators, we should consider all these aspects. Like mobile phones are very cheap. They are cheaper to use. You can use messages. You can use internet. It's much cheaper than carrying a laptop around. It's much cheaper to uh, buy a new desktop because these devices are always with us. They are ubiquitous, they are everywhere. Everyone, almost everyone has a mobile phone, whether it is a smartphone or it is just an ordinary phone. <clears throat> okay, gosh, you don't need to have a large screen iPhone. <laughs> you, you can use it, okay? Okay, and then the other aspect is they are very personal. So. You don't have to share these things with anyone, like in the classrooms mostly. Like if you have a session, like if you have a teacher who's sharing your class, he's using or she's using his own computer, her own computer, and you are using your own, but there's a, like a sharing thing. On one system, a lot of people work. So you cannot have your own things on your system. So on the mobile phone, because this is personal, you can carry it anywhere. You have everything on that that is personal, you can use it only whenever you want, wherever you want, and how you want. So, <clears throat> because of the, the increase in the number of mobile phone users, we have to consider these tools, like, instead of using these tools for entertainment and fun, we can utilize them in our teaching and our learning process, and let the students use the same thing. Teach them how to use it because they, they, they love to use these devices. They don't want to keep them away. If you take the devices away, they feel that it is something like offensive. So give them a chance to use that. Instead of keeping these things, <clears throat> give them a chance to use. And then we are always connected because the world is expanding. It is a global village. Now you are connected to the information that is all over the world. So use that device in order to be connected with different users, students all around, students in your class, your management, your colleagues. So we can use these devices. Now the question would be how to use it. Like I have been talking about all these things. It's easy to say, OK, these devices are distractors. And I'm saying, no, we can use it, but how to use it? That is a big question. Everyone would be curious to ask. So let's start <clears throat> with this thing. Just think about these things. How many changes have been like happen, uh, happening since the mobile phone is in our hands, in our market? What changes mobile phones have, like, seriously have brought? Like mobile phone in, wristwatch out. You don't need a wristwatch anymore. Mobile in, radio out. You have radio on that. Mobile in, studio out. You can listen to the music. You can use them for your listening activities inside the classroom. Mobile in is no, then letter out. You are using emails. No more letters. No more wasting papers. No more cutting trees. Mobile in, calendar out. You have calendar on that also. <clears throat> mobile in camera out. You don't need to carry a camera. If you have a pocket mobile phone, that's enough. You don't have to carry the mobile for, uh, your camera. Uh, you don't have to carry the camera inside the class. Earlier, like I, I, I was going through a presentation, I was watching that, listening to the uh, speaker from Japan. He was giving us nice ideas about the screenshots and everything. So you can use everything with the mobile phone. You have the camera in your hand. <clears throat> then you have mobile phone in, and then you have computer out. And the mobile phones, like, uh, I'm not talking about the common ones, but the smartphones, really, they are smart. 
So we say, okay, smartphones are smart people. So they are smart. They have everything you have got on the computer. Like a lot of our users now, uh, participants, they are using mobile phones to attend these webinars, these conferences. In fact, now we have our, you know, one of the moderators who's using the, uh, I think, iPad, if I'm not mistaken. And then let's talk about the iPhone also. So you can use all these things. You don't have to carry a laptop with you. You don't have to carry like <clears throat> a computer with you in order to do all these activities. So mobile phone can be used in all these matters. <clears throat> so let's see mobile phone as a learning tool. I've written it under utilized tool. Okay. What can mobile phone do? Mobile phone because of its variety, there are so many. <clears throat> there are so many like uh, mobile phones in the market. They have variety, so you choose. You have the option to choose what you want to buy, how much you like. Can you afford? There are cheap ones. There are expensive ones. All in different categories. So students like this, like as educators, we love to change the mobile phones because this is inflation. Not only inflation, it is like it has become a need of the day. It has become the part and parcel of our daily lives. Same with our students. <clears throat> then the f different features as we discussed earlier. In mobile phones you have all what you want, like what you like what you are looking at in, as a teacher or as a student. You have calendars, you can put the deadlines. You have calculators there. You have <clears throat> cameras there, you have audio recorders there, you have video recorders there. You have PDF readers, you have MS Word, everything is there. You, you, it's like there are numerous features of these mobile devices. <clears throat> With the functions, when you talk about the functions, yes, uh, thank you, Kosh, I have seen that HTC, yeah, okay. <laughs> when we talk about the functions, every mobile has a different function. Now we have retina display, retina movers, and like we have touch screens, and we have like <clears throat> latest iPhones, latest these galaxies, tablets, 3Gs and 4Gs, and the internet speed has gone up because of these devices, and and not only that one, because of these functions, we we normally we we do almost everything on our phones. You use the phone as the remote for your television. You use the phone as the remote for your presentation. So there are numerous functions. Yes, thank you. Mobile for coordinated functions. Yes, mobile for polls. Yeah, mobile for your research. So everything is there. <clears throat> when you talk about the productivity, as a language teacher, I've seen it like, okay, basically we teach all these four skills, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So if I see a mobile phone in that matter, whether it can be a productive like device in my classroom, I would say yes. What would you say? Like, can we use mobile phones for all these skills, language teaching skills, like speaking, writing, reading, and uh, listening? <clears throat> can I have some comments on that, please? Yes, Unita, yes, you can use this as a diary, yeah? Okay? Okay. Can you just write a single sentence for any skill that you, you, you can use or you are using mobile phones? For instance, listening skill, what activity can you do with uh, reading, writing, and speaking? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, <clears throat> a great games, right? Educational games, emails, social media, right? Uh, I want to like look at in particular about the students as a student, like what can you give them on the mobile phone so you see the productivity there. Okay, screen casting, yeah.
Okay. Getting nice messages, nice comments. Okay. <clears throat> How many of you are language teachers? Can I just get a yes or no? something there? Come to the mic if you want to share. Yes, be good. <laughs> yeah, that is nice one. Killing a snake. Yeah, you are in Thailand, so surely. I'm sure you are not in Bangkok. Uh, no, Shambles is in Chiang Mai, which is a little bit further north and probably a little bit more tropical. I'm glad that the iPhone came in handy. Bees put down her hand so it doesn't look like she has a question. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, actually, I have been to Bangkok and Chiang Mai and yeah, I can imagine, right? Okay. Okay, in the productivity activity, like uh, uh, oh, if you see it as a language instructor's tool, you can use <coughs> mobile phones for reading purposes. You can give assignments. They can read it. You can send the questionnaire. They can write it down. You can send the listening activities. You can ask them to record their own <coughs> experiences. Like in, in, as a language teacher, I see it like a thorough device that can be used to produce all kind of skills in classroom or out, outside the classroom. Now, mobile phones, real-time collaboration, right? Yeah, sometimes I get the messages, teacher, what is the meaning of this word? Sometimes I get the video, okay, teacher, look at this video. Can you tell me some more about it? What is it about? Or sometimes, uh, honestly, like, I, I get sometimes shocked. Like, once I got a phone call from my student, he was visiting Bahrain. That was something really interesting. He was traveling to Bahrain and he was there. <coughs> Like mostly our Arab learners here, especially in Saudi Arabia, they are not uh, much aware of the language because English is still a foreign language for them. So I got a call. He asked me, teacher, I'm in a shopping mall and there is WC. What is it, teacher? Because we have toilets. What is WC? He called me, in fact, and I was driving. And like it was a blast for me. So I had to explain him what is WC and all these things. So these kind of like uh, connectivity or real-time collaboration is very important to motivate your students. And mobile phones can be like a channel, can be a medium for these things. Yeah, tweeting and all. <coughs> Just in time learning. For instance, in the classroom, mostly like in language teaching, <coughs> I have some like projects, okay, they have to look around, they have to find an article, read about it and make a presentation. Or, like do some research on some topic and like <clears throat> give a proposal and all. Inside the classroom when, when they are there, let them use the mobile phone. Google it or there are other websites. You can, like as a teacher, you can ask them where to go. You have to be vigilant there. You have to be uh, like, you have to monitor their activities. And they can go online, they use these devices. They are more motivated in the classroom because you are not taking away something that they possess or they, 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 they think that, that is the most important thing in their lives. Like I have conducted a survey in which my students said, okay, they would rather go out of the class and like, <clears throat> but they won't be uh, like, they, they, they would not give their mobile phones to the teacher just to keep it on silent or put it away. Because I have seen some schools where they say strictly mobile phones are not allowed or no use of mobile phones and everything. But not, like, like in this generation, they are like net generation, they are digital natives, they are grown up with all these devices. We cannot take these things away from them. For me, it is seriously, it's, it's a crime if I call it, it's a crime. Like if I take their mobile phones away. Instead of give them a chance to use it, Teachers should be yeah, a little bit liberal, give them a choice, give them some activities on mobile phones. I don't say like let them use the mobile phone for the whole session. Just give them a little bit time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes on the session to use the mobile phone and do some activities. 
basically it is all about the teacher, how he uses it, how he makes like these devices uh, usable inside the class. Really, like as a teacher, I have to work on different activities. I have to adapt their coursework into mobile phone format so that they can use it. They feel happy with that thing, <coughs> and they are really like motivated towards coming to your class. So <coughs> these are the like some common uses or the functions or the features of normal mobile phones that we have. <coughs> Moving to the next slide, mobile phones as motivational tools, as like Cresham says, anxiety interferes with second language acquisition. Like if you are anxious or like if you are AA, like if you are not focused on something, you won't learn anything. And if you take these devices away from our students, they really feel bad. <coughs> That's true. I, I agree with Janita. Yeah, we we really like uh, hinder their innovative skills. We don't give them a chance to use these phones. Like being a teacher, I am very curious about all these new gadgets. If I see something new, I am very curious. I want to check it. I want to go through it. And believe me, like for our students, if we give them a chance to explore these devices in educational scenario, they they, they really like make wonders, they like give us surprises that okay, what they could do and what we have like you know resisted. So <clears throat> we have to give them these things, and then there are a lot of new opportunities for engaging learners. Like only in this conference, I have seen like quite a few participants or quite a few moderators. They are talking about mobile phones. So this is the time we have to accept the change. You cannot resist the change for long. You have to accept it. Instead of asking them to leave these phones, we have to adapt their lifestyle. We have to go to their world. We have to explore their world and engage them in new opportunities. And the thing is, it's not the time like we are talking about bringing real world facilities into a limited classroom. Limited means it's no more the time of chalk and talk. Like teacher comes in, brings a book, writes on the board, and the students listen and then keep on going. Teacher keep on going. The students have to just listen to the teacher. Our teacher is there, the authority and all. It's no more the same time. <clears throat> Those limited facilities are no more in use. Now we have a different world. We have a different kind of generation. For this generation, we have to go beyond our capabilities, learn something, learn, unlearn, relearn, all these things we have to keep on doing because the technology is not limited. It is lost and it is growing in every second. Every day you have something new. So in order to be an updated teacher, you have to go with the same thing. You have to learn all these things. You have to go one by one. I don't feel like, okay, <clears throat> a change comes all of a sudden. No, it takes time. But you have, you are with your students. You are learning their lives. You, you know their experiences. So utilize it inside the classroom. <clears throat> so we have to come out of this limited classroom, give them their own world, bring the world in their classrooms. Don't limit their walls. Open the walls, open the windows, open the doors. Let the information come in. Let them use this new kind of environment, <clears throat> and they will be motivated. Get me, they would be motivated. I know my Saudi students. It's very hard to motivate them, but since I started these mobile phones in the classrooms, they love to come inside the classroom. I don't give them like a full class, full lesson of mobile phones. I just give them five minutes, ten minutes activity on mobile phones, especially with the LMS and all these uh, online activities and all these <coughs> online sharings and all. <coughs> mobile phone as a pedagogical tool. <coughs> that is the main focus of my presentation. Uh, as Pensky and Sharpel say, I agree with them that mobile phone is not an standalone tool in the classroom. As I told you earlier in, my, uh, in the introduction, <clears throat> that I see mobile phones as an add-on tool. I don't see mobile phone as a standalone tool. 
and I don't favor it. I don't uh, advocate the use of mobile phone in the classroom and leave the books, leave the pens, leave the markers, or <laughs> even leave the teacher. I say, with all these tools, use this new technology, use this new tool in your classroom in order to motivate students, in order to <clears throat> give them the world they are living in. <clears throat> so let's see pedagogical uh, uses of this device. <clears throat> Pedagogy, you can record the lessons, you can record your lectures, you can record students' uh, comments. Later on, you can revisit, you can re read it, you can re listen it, and then give the comments, pass the feedback. Because for the listening activities or for the speaking activities, mostly the problem as a, as a teacher I face is <coughs> to give them the feedback. If a student is talking for two minutes on a topic and at the end I just say, okay, well done, that is not the feedback that a student is, uh, you know, expecting. So we have to give them a solid feedback and that is only possible when this talk is recorded, teacher listens to it carefully and then give a thorough feedback. Recall is the same thing. You can recall, save the lecture, if the students are there, let them record, let them <coughs> uh, record the screen, let them record, let them take the photos of the, even the whiteboard, what you have written, and then they can recall it later on, at their own time, at their own pace. Reinterpret, it is the same like technique that we teachers use it, students for students. Uh, we write something and then they take it and we think, okay, that's fine, they understood, there are some CCQs and then instruction check questions, but do we really see that whether they have acquired something, whether they have learned something? So for them, it's like a class and out of the class it's done, but with the mobile phones, they can use it as a reinterpretation tool, they can reinterpret into their own like language whenever they want and then they relate, <clears throat> they can relate the real life situation into our classroom situations. As I earlier mentioned, they can Google, they can go online, they can watch a YouTube video. For instance, I'm teaching them uh, 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 like a novel, for instance, I'm teaching them Sinbad. Give them a chance to go to YouTube, watch a small clip or watch a video. And then it is like something really motivating for them. They learn it a lot in this way. <clears throat> and then we are talking about social. Socially connected, socially constructed, they, they, they uh, uh, gather the information. They talk to different uh, students all over the world or maybe inside the class. Give them a chance to chat because chat is very common nowadays. Everyone is chatting, everyone is busy on WhatsApp and then Twitter and then other channels, chatting channels, so give our students the chance to chat with each other. And then we have situated, it is situated like you are in the situation, they have the access, they can go online, they can do whatever they want. This is kind of a situated learning happening there. <clears throat> okay, the question is now, uh, like you, you can ask, okay, if I don't have a smartphone, how can I use my ordinary phone with not internet connected? So here are a few tips for the teachers who can use the phones that are not internet connected or internet enabled or smartphones. <clears throat> Just a small quotation there, it is never too late to learn, so we can learn anytime if we want. Using a simple JSON mobile phone, these features are almost in every every smartphone or every ordinary phone, whether it is a color screen or a black and white screen or a touch or a HD. <coughs> notes feature. So students can use notes feature to collect everyday language as their own <coughs> dictionary. Instead of writing on the paper, we then ask them to okay write down these words, new words, and write down the 
destinations. Do we realize uh, that, okay, once they leave the class, they don't even bother to open this book to revise the words, but with the mobile phones. It is like a part-time activity. Whenever they are free, they can just go through the words. That is motivating. They can just, okay, touch the mobile phone, okay, these are the words I have to remember. And at the end of the module or at the end of the year, they would have like a, a good collection of the words they have studied inside the classroom. So this feature can be used. That's why I say we don't use these features. And then we have a more voice memo recorder. <clears throat> it is again, they can record their own. So they, this feature is almost in every phone. So they can record, they can record teachers' talks, they can record their colleagues' talks, they can have a discussion, they can record the discussion, or especially when we have like <clears throat> conversation, they can record the conversation, listen to it, then consider changing, or if there are any mistakes or errors, they can do everything with that. <clears throat> and then we have a text messaging service, feature to reinforce learning vocabulary. Teacher can do that. Teacher can send one text message every day to students with two words, maybe three words. Our uh, students can do the same. They can send a text message to teacher in order to ask the word. So that feature can be used. And now the question would be, okay, if we use text messaging service, we have to pay a lot of money. The good news is that there are a lot of websites from where you can send free text messages. You don't have to share your mobile phones, maybe numbers, like some of the teachers, are. Uh, they think, okay, this is something personal, they don't want to share with the students, so you don't have to share. There are a lot of websites, you just go there, register yourself, and you can send free text messages to, to your students, so every day one message counts a lot. <clears throat> then we have, again, the text messaging service can be used for circular writing. One student can send one line, second a student adds it, third, and that's how you create your own composition, like a paragraph or maybe a story or whatever. Like it depends on the innovation of the teacher, how innovative the teacher is. Yes, I agree, line and WhatsApp and all, right. Uh, but I'm talking about only simple GSM mobile phones, so maybe you don't have line and you don't have these other features WhatsApp and Twitter. <clears throat> Calendar and notes feature to set goals, deadlines for assignments and reminders. These can be used easily. And just think about it, like for, for me as a foreign language teacher, if I let them use the mobile phone interfaces in English, how many terms are they going to learn in English? Like notes, feature, record, play, replay, all the features, all the buttons they have on their mobile phones, they learn a lot. So almost 300 words and just they, they, they learn in the interface if they use the interface in English. <clears throat> yeah, okay. <clears throat> Next is, now, how to use mobile phones as a pedagogical tool? Change doesn't happen overnight. So using internet-enabled cell phones. <clears throat> use mobile internet, connection for online dictionaries, dictionaries, or uh, picture dictionaries, whatever. So I have given a link also. It's a wonderful link. It's a wonderful website where students can go. You give them a word, let them use this uh, website. They can see the picture there also. So that in, uh, reinforces the learning. They keep these words in their mind because when they see the picture, it <clears throat> automatically motivates them. It saves the picture in their mind and then it helps them learn the words, yes. Thank you, Krosh, I have, yeah, okay. Taking these words. Use free programs to make flashcards. You can use the flashcards with the free programs and then you can share the flashcards with the students. They can use these flashcards on their mobile phones. Okay, use the mobile phone to check a student's comprehension and get feedback. Poll everywhere and there are a lot of these web pages, websites where you can just check the comprehension of the students like polls and you can write a reading paragraph and then you check the comprehension, they use it on their phones. So <clears throat> Use the mobile phone for flogging, now blogging and now flogging. Let them speak, let them uh, record their blogs. You can listen to the blog, the students can listen to the blog and once they record something, 
they feel that okay they have produced something they feel the author uh, like authorship of these uh, recording so they are motivated in these ways also use the mobile phone for micro blogging on Twitter and Facebook in Saudi Arabia I think in fact in the world Twitter is the like the biggest blogging site so far so they use Twitter a lot my students here they use Facebook a lot so let them use it create your own page class page or anything that you can operate <coughs> and they can use with their mobile phones that helps them a lot uh, yeah, IPDO. Thank you. IPDO is a wonderful website. You can record the same. It is a flogging website. It's a wonderful uh, website. Thank you, Janita. Now, uh, it's like more like a research thing when I come to these mobile phones, problematizing mobile phones. Now, when I was thinking about it, I. I I came up with all these theories in my mind. I, I don't know whether some of you are interested in theories or not. Being a researcher, I have to go through all these theories and I have to see whether they fit into mobile phone learning category or not. So, <clears throat> uh, like cognitivism. In this cognitivism theory, <clears throat> They, they like this. They talk about more like cognitivism, the human minds, or like interaction. They have to save all these things. I, I'm not going into detail of this thing. Uh, I just want to start with the Vygotskyan framework of thought. Like in his activity theory in 1978, he gave two different learning perspectives. One is intra-psychological level. One is inter-psychological level. Like in intra psychological level, learner reconciles and constructs his or her own personal space of cognitive patterns, how they learn, how the mind works, and all these things. And in inter psychological level, learner interacts with external stimuli and reconstructs instances of improved learning opportunities. Like what is intra psychological? Intra psychological, in simple words, I say, the Things that goes on in their mind, what do they think about the learning? That's why I say like, okay, they, they are motivated if they are given the liberty to use the devices they consider their own, they consider the part and parcel of their life. So this is one perspective. The other one is inter, inter psychological level, like external uh, stimuli, external like motivation, what is that one? Because they see around themselves people having mobile phones, it's a competition, he has an iPhone, he has HTC, he has this and that. All these like external elements also <coughs> play a role in their learning perspective. So we have to consider all these things according to Vygotsky's activity. Now when we look at this social constructivism theory, <coughs> They represent a different school of thought in which they say learning takes place in a socially constructed environment. Like I, 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 like I was telling you earlier, like mobile phones give a chance to our students to connect with each other socially. So this theory also fits into that mobile learning context. It also supports the presence and role of mobile devices in the learning process. So. Basically, these socio-constructivists socio believe that knowledge is constructed through social interaction in which the presence of external agents like mobile phones or external like motivation is unavoidable. You cannot avoid it. And they also like uh, strongly believe like co cognitivists. They strongly believe that such knowledge construction is impossible in the absence of internal stimuli. So social constructivists, they talk about external agents, external motivation, while cognitivists, they talk about internal stimuli, internal push, internal support. But when we see all these three activities, they are intermingled. So activity theory, they talk about external and internal motivation. On the other hand, cognitivists, they talk about external motivation and socio-constructivism. Our socio-constructivists, they talk about internal. So 
or like, like this mobile learning comes into these both theories. <clears throat> Uh, for further further readings, uh, I'll, I'll uh, upload a paper that I have written on this uh, theories and all. Okay, in conclusion, I, I, I'll, I would say momentum gathers for a reason and can be hard to slow down. I think it is important to be familiar with the new resources that are available and to challenge teaching, learning myths and prejudices. Second one, right, what I feel is learning is maximized when a variety of resources are used. And mobile phone as a learning tool can contribute to a more holistic approach to learning in which like you use all the different activities, all the different theories, all the different scopes as a teacher, combined with visual, kinesthetic, and tactile learning styles. Thank you. The last comment, I, I want to write it of Caleb Gantenbo. Learning means being open to what comes, relating to it, and becoming different in its presence. So I'm open for the questions. If you have any questions, I'm open for that. Thank you, Kosh. OK, so if if you have any questions, uh, anybody just raise your hand or type them into the text chat and we can share those. Uh, I really thoroughly enjoyed that session. As a leader of pedagogy at my school, there's a lot of useful things I can take away from this, even though I only teach, uh, our school's only a primary school. I think that it's um, important that as educators we understand that mobile devices certainly can help us out, especially in schools like mine where we have limited access to even hardware like laptops and computers. Cool. There's definitely some positive comments coming in the chat for you. So how? So have a look at those and any questions anyone? Okay. Mm -hmm. How to okay. Ah, so oh, I think okay. Carol's saying I think mm -hmm. that this might be a good way of convincing mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Certainly, your passion mm -hmm. for mobile devices is mm -hmm. um is great. So I think what Carol's asking is, in 90 seconds, mm -hmm. how would you convince a teacher to use? Mobile, mobile devices in their classroom. She's okay. asking for a very yeah, quick okay. uh, I think you have to bring the teacher in your class and show the teacher how you use it. Just a simple thing is, just let the students uh, use a, uh, what I say, it is a, uh, if your students are primary students, let them use the dictionary. Give them some words on the board. Let them use the picture dictionary. If they are in the secondary stage, let them use one mobile phone, uh, give it to everyone like one by one, pass it on to other students, let them write one sentence and add up to the other, so make a story. So in secondary school, like in middle school, you can use in a different way. Let them record the conversation in English or in Spanish or in French, whatever language you are teaching. So I'm sure once the teacher sees it in practically, he or she will be impressed and she would be convinced. Hope you you are convinced with the answer. I believe in practical rather than in theories. Yes, Carol, I agree. A round of applause there. If you click on your smiley face, you'll find a little applause there. Uh, we have a question from Veronica. Veronica, would you like to come to the microphone? No. Or well, maybe she accidentally pressed the wrong button. Probably, yeah. Okay, I, I have seen the All link right. down in the chat. Yeah. You can download the paper there, and you can read the paper. It, it talks about everything in details. So hopefully, like, it would be a help for the teachers who want to come into mobile phone world, or mobile learning world. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Suhal. Now, um, to finish up tonight, we'd like to thank you very much for taking part um, in our conference. 
it's great to have educators from all over the world sharing their, their wonderful knowledge. And it's a fantastic opportunity for us to hear what's happening in other parts of the world. So thank you very much. Now, for the participants, once you exit, you'll get a survey to fill out. And if you'd like to collect one of our lovely little badges at the bottom to put on your blog or your personal pages, um, just go to the link that's here listed. Uh, there is a, another session starting now with Michael Graffin. He's sharing his experience as a glo global classroom educator. So I'll finish the recording now. And thank you once again, uh, Sahal, for coming all the way from Saudi Arabia. Thank, thank, thank you. you.